Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, in here, we are from Group 7, will present our topic about corn earworm in corn plant. Uh, before we start our discussion today, let me introduce uh, my group. First is Ananda Fitrianto Susilo, number 113, and then Hanifa Asal Sabila, number 114, Adita Mas Setia, Uh, number 124 and Lutfi Resta number 132. Um, in here we, we we will discuss about classification, life cycle and habitat and food source about corn earworm and then symptom and damage that caused by corn earworm and monitoring technique. Uh, okay, um, we will talk about corn and worm. This species is active throughout in the tropical and subtropical climate, but becomes progressively more restricted to the summer months with increasing latitude. The life cycle can be complete in about 30 days. Uh, clarification, Helicoverpasia, um, In the kingdom Animalia, Phylum Anthropoda, class Insecta, order Lepidoptera, family Nucleoidea, genus Helicoverpa, species Helicoverpasia. Okay, next. Uh, about life cycle. Cornworm eggs are a pinhead size and have characteristic radicus. They are uh, light singly by female moons and turn from the white to dark brown before heading in three to um, ten days. Larva pastoral six um, in star with the first being about one um, for uh, 16 inch long. Larva develop takes about uh, 18 days before they pupa in the soil and remaining about 8 under 14 days. Development from eggs uh, to adult takes uh, 3 to 4 weeks uh, during the summer. They are several generations per year. Okay, next. Habitat and food source. Caterpillar have a uh, chewing moon part. Adult have a um, synopsis mode. Uh, the newly hatched caterpillar with it is eggshell and then fit on tinder leaves. Older caterpillar fit on older leaf and tunnel into fruit. A wide variety of wood plant and crop including beans, corn, cotton, peanuts, sorghum, tomato, and ornamental. Binding and flowering plants are suitable hosts. Next. Okay, now we will uh, explain about the symptom. Corn earworm larvae attack fruit, fruiting structure resulting in damage from feeding and through facilitation of disease and other insect pests. In corn, Helicoverpasia leaves cereal for bore holes in the apical leaf and eat the top few centimeters of the chops when they develop. High incidence of disease introduced into damage issue can result in increase in chop damage. On larger plants, eggs can be found stuck to the silk. Sym symptoms on effect plant parts are Variet. The first fruit, pods, or seeds can be affected by both internal and external feeding. Second, growing points are damaged by internal feeding, boring, and external feeding. The third, inflorescence damage caused by both internal and external feeding. And the last, leaf damage caused by external feeding. Now we will explain about the damage. Corn 
is the preferred host of the corn earworm. Annual corn yield loss range from 5 until 7% for field corn and 10 until 15% for corn canned for human consumption. First generation larvae may fit with, within the tightly roll leaf or word stage corn. This they make cause numerous rage holes to appear after the leaf unfurled. Unfur. The larvae also deposit wet, tend to brown west droppings or fresh between the wort and the base of the leaf. The match from second generation larvae is more economically important because the larvae feed on corn kernels around the tip of the ear. Both the ear damage and lar larval frost also permit secondary disease pathogens to infect corn kernels and further reduce grain quality and yield. One of these pathogens, Aspergillus flavus lin, produce alpha toxin that is poisonous to both humans and livestock. Third generation corn earworms may attack late planted corn, but these larvae are used, usually found on other host plants. Monitoring corn earworm. Eggs and larvae often are not sampled on corn because eggs are very difficult to detect. To detect and larvae burrow down into the silk out of the reach of insecticide soon after hatching. Much, much can be monitored with black light and pheromone traps, but both sex are captured in light traps, whereas only males that attract to the sex pheromone. But trap types give an estimate of when moths invade or emerge and relative densities, but pheromone traps are easier to use because they are selective. Now we I we will explain about light trap monitoring. Light trap light trap is one of very effective tools for monitoring and management of the insect pests as it mass trap both the sex of insect pests and also sub substantially reduce the carryover pest population. The most widely applied method to survey insect is to use light traps which exploit their attraction to artificial light. Franzen and Johansson, 2007. Light traps are also used to determine seasonal patterns of insect density in crop areas. It also provides information related to insect distribution, abundance, flight patterns, and help to decide the timing of application of management tools. Uh, working mechanism of light trap. The insect attracted due to the black light which strike on smooth white pebbles surface on and hence slide down in the insect collection chambers through tunnel. Once the insect fall in, in the upper collection chamber, the sorting occur when the insect try to fly and find opening for exit because of the difference dimension of sieves at the bottom of its chambers. Uh, the safe dimension of collecting chambers was chosen accordingly to categorize large, medium, and small size insects. The scan of sorting of voids, damaging of wings, legs, or antennae of insects, which have identification of specimens. The collected specimens were killed using few drops of poison, ethyl acetate or carbon tetrachloride in cotton, which was kept inside its airtight collection chamber for a few minutes. Uh, collecting data. The measurements were conducted once in a week from dusk to dawn in the fixed days. The traditional and black light trap were operated in two different days to minimize the light effects of each other. 
the collected insect were identified up to a family level along the data taxonomic hierarchy and biological status to evaluate the performance of both traps. Um, next is pheromone trap monitoring. Pheromone trap. Pheromone traps. Traps are available that allows us to know that whether or not this species is present. Male moths of the corn earworm are lured into a trap bait with a pheromone that is an imitation of the sex attractant of the female moth, because only male moth that caught in this trap. While female moths are laying eggs on silk, the trap is used strictly for monitoring and not for controlling the space. Monitoring the moths allow us to make decisions about the need to control the larva before they infest the sweet corn ears. Uh, working mechanism of light trap. Uh, I mean, working mechanism of pheromone trap. Trap location. During early summer, the trap should be set up near the earliest sweet corn planting. After the early plantings have reached the born six stage, the trap should be moved so that they are close to fresh looking corn. Place the traps as close as to the field as possible, but where they will not be knocked by farm machinery. The trap for corn earworm is effective anywhere in or near the corn field, whether is it is over bare ground, sod, or beach. Trap style. Corn earworm moths do not respond when the pheromone is placed in a larger, more open concept trap. Several versions of this trap are available. All are large cones, but they, they vary in size and comp composition. Most are caught in the cylindrical top part of the trap and most will be alive when you find them. Collecting data. Traps should be checked at least, at least every five days until the moths begin to be caught and, f and every two days after that, it is easier to prevent moths from escaping if the trap is checked in early morning when air temperature is relatively cool. Moths are caught in, a, in the cylindrical top part of the trap and moths will be alive when you find them. You need to kill the moths before emptying the trap and counting them. For a small number of moths, like 10 per trap, it's easy to crush the moths by hand by pinching the thorax. For a larger number of moths, that 10 up 10 per trap, an easy way to kill them is to use a freezer for about 50 minutes. So this is the end of our presentation today. Thank you for watching. And if you have any question, you can ask in forums pada. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.